So the gold price in 2023 was fairly stable in pound terms. We began the year around about 1520 or so. We had a, a maximum drawdown of just over 1%. And in the end of the year, we finished around about 5.5% up. So when we look at the price chart, I'll show you first the candlestick chart. Anyone who's trading is probably familiar with one of those. And if you're more comfortable with a line graph, again, they both show the same thing, but here is the data on, on a line. So relatively easy to interpret. The higher points are the higher prices. And you can see here we had higher prices in uh, roughly the end of the sort of second quarter. So going into the spring, you know, just before the summer there and later in the year in the fall into the winter. And then also we have the low points. So I've circled those here in the red. And again, you can see there's a couple early in the year, but mostly they are sort of later on in the summer there. And uh, those are sort of the lower prices. So if we take a rough average by eye, uh, I did say it was around 15.50 in another video. It's probably just 15.60 or so, maybe 15.65 here. And I've just drawn, just like I say, by eye, uh, the orange line here. So the thing with the gold price, when you are looking at the actual physical spot price, it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get the best deals then. So it might be that the gold spot price drops low and nobody really wants to sell then, or if they do, they wanna get back a certain amount and so their premiums will be a bit higher. And it might be that when the gold price spikes high, people are all looking to sell at the same time. Think, oh yeah, let's cash in. You know, gold's got some good momentum. Let's get our uh, stuff up for sale. And it might be that the buyers are a bit more cautious and think, well, oh, hang on, it's it's suddenly rocketed up quite quickly. So I want to just take my time here and just see what the price does. And therefore, you might get people selling at very low premiums when the price is high. And when the gold price is just steady and stable, people can, uh, you know, work on a margin and get a bit more comfortable with the price. And it just makes things perhaps a bit easier to work with. So that's the, the first thing to consider that although, you know, the prices on the chart might suggest that you want to be buying, you know, in uh, July, for example, when the price was low, you might not necessarily find the best deal then. And also, if you are buying bullion uh, physical gold, then you're probably going to be paying a bit of premium as well. So depending on what you're going to be actually buying. So if you're buying you know, something a bit more fancy like the Tudor Beasts or whatever collectible series is out at the time, then again, you might be paying a little bit more if you're just buying the best value, you know, one ounce like we saw a moment ago or something like that, then, you know, again, those might be tied a bit closer to the spot price and, uh, you know, you might get a bit better when the price does dip down, you know, if you can pull the trigger and get the timing right, then you could certainly, uh, you know, save yourself a couple of percent there. But like we say, gold has been pretty stable over the year. So with a, a fluctuation of less than 10%, you know, from bottom to top, it's uh, it's really done its thing as being quite stable and, you know, just saying uh, uh, it's safe haven uh, asset, really. Uh, for me personally, I don't really consider gold as part of my investment pot. It's more part of my savings. So obviously I save cash in the bank, but I do save some cash into the physical gold as well. And yeah, so far that's looking after me. Uh, I first started getting involved in 2018, although I wasn't really stacking heavily then. I did buy, you know, some uh, some gold coins then, and uh, mainly started stacking a couple of years later. So, if you've been stacking for a longer time, you know, 10, 20 years, even 30, 40 years, then you're certainly going to be sat in some good profits by now, I'm sure. And it does just depend, you know, what you are buying. So. This is what the price has done in 2023. And we can see uh, on this next chart, these are sort of the low points of each month. So I'm just working on a video at the moment to see when the best month is to buy on average. And uh, it's quite interesting actually. So we will see what this year brings. So 2024, it could be uh, all kinds of volatility. You know, we've had a little bit of up and down already, but nothing too crazy. So uh, yeah, gold on the whole though, is a bit less likely to get these wild swings in prices. So uh, gold is, like I say, it's known for being a safe haven and a more stable asset. It's not gonna suddenly shoot up higher and higher, most likely, and it probably won't you know, plummet to nothing 
overnight either. So not as volatile. Some people like that. Some people obviously don't. Uh, but day to day, you know, there are price movements that are tradable. So if that's your thing, then, uh, you know, you can fill your boots there. But uh, if you just want something that you can, you know, just keep accumulating over the long term, just doesn't require much thought, doesn't require much analysis, and you can just keep buying those best value coins, just keep adding to the stack, and just let it accumulate over time and build to something significant. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll talk to you on the next one.